So now as we get ready for Pro Light, uh, take a look at the starting lineup and uh, it, the top six are inverted based on points, Ivan. Yes, uh, the, these trucks are about uh, 300 horsepower, Marty. They're, they're small trucks, um, four-cylinder motors, uh, very quick, great entry-level class. Uh, this guy right here, Jeff Kincaid, uh, has been around for a long time, and I predict that he's gonna, he's gonna be right at the front of the pack. Green flag flies, and that's uh, Randy Eller in the 11, Chad Horde in the high side on the number nine, and it looks like the high side may be the preferred line right now. Remember, two-wheel drive, light-duty pickup trucks, the smaller version of our Amzo two-wheel drive Pro 2 trucks. As, uh, boy, look at the sticks in the back. <laughs> I was going to say, are we making bets so they can get through this first lap clean without taking each other out? Looking pretty good so far, Marty. Well, and it's Chad Horde that is uh, looking like he's doing real fine up front. Casey Curry also in this mix. There's Randy Eller, our pole sitter. He's been uh, shuffled back to about fifth right now and looks like he's getting shuffled even further. Well, they got a lot of talent. Let me tell you, there's a lot of guys in here, too, who's got so much experience. Jeff Kincaid, as I mentioned before, he is, he's been around for so many years, won lots of championships, always fast. There you saw the onboard shot from Kincaid, and there he is. He has worked his way up from the third row up to third position. Let's watch again down the rhythm section. This this big jump here is pretty good. You can see the ones that are falling off, the guys that are kicking in the back. Watch them in the rhythm section. That's going to really tell you the trucks that are working good. Battle for fifth right there between Kyle LaDuke and uh, Chris Brandt. Meanwhile, let's go back up front again. You got Chad Horde still leading. Here comes the 99 through of Kyle LaDuke. That's one of the two sons of uh, Kurt LaDuke. You see Kurt in our Pro 4 action. Meanwhile, there is uh, the two of Casey Curry. He's got his hands full with Jeff Kincaid. Curry, if you remember, our last time out picked up his first ever Pro win. And boy, you talk about a guy who was happy. to hold off one more time. You hear these engines scream. Now, I heard these guys talking about these turn these motors somewhere around 9,000 RPM, if you can imagine. It's no wonder we see a lot of overheating sometimes, especially when the uh, front gets uh, clogged because the radiator just can't get enough air. Well, the conditions here are fantastic. We shouldn't have that problem, at least uh, not as bad as some of the tracks we've seen in the past when you get the mud, but they've got to watch for that. Not only that, keep in mind that these uh, don't have windshields, so they've got to always have tear off. All, all these trucks are, uh, don't have windshields, so always aware of that mud and the debris that comes in. In fact, we love debris in off-road racing. <laughs> Jeff Kincaid <laughs> trying the outside-inside move. He's now on the inside, heading into this left-hand sweeper. I think he's finally going to get the position from Casey Curry, and yes, you can see, there's Curry from the onboard. So down that back straightaway, and now Jeff Kincaid sets his sights on our race leader, Chad Hoare. So while all this action goes on, we still have the rest of this race plus all of Pro Form. We'll be back with more torque after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back at Paris Auto Speedway, and by the way, if you're not familiar with the area, the old Riverside track was just a few miles away, and here are the current positions right now, as you see everyone in the top 12, and there's Brian Deegan, 13th, and you say, wait a minute, he sounds familiar from X Games. Well, we asked him why he's here. This type of racing is just full contact, a lot of horsepower, a lot of roost, and, and you just get out there, and you're getting air in these trucks, and it really transfers from what I, what I do is riding dirt bikes, and it really transfers into this. Well, Ryan's going to have his work cut out for him. And whoa, look on the inside, and uh, that Speed is, yeah, what's he doing? You can't be, I don't know, that, that's going to be, uh, we'll see what happens here. That, that was a jump on the start of either side. Well, uh, we're waiting for race officials, and uh, well, uh, whoa, and look out, that's Chad Horde, and he is up and over and up against the barrier. And so now, if this was a legal restart, he's in serious jeopardy of not being in this race. Yeah, let's see what happens here. He gets uh, real sideways, he would have been fine had he not hit that berm on the right there. He could have just driven right through there and kept going. 
Well, he has got a right front tire going down, and they are pulling into the pit lane as he was able to get himself off of that uh, concrete barrier, and they are making the change. And the, the word we are getting from USAC officials is that it was not an official start, Ivan, so that's going to change his entire race. It's going to put Chad Hort back in the race. It should put him back in the race, yeah. We'll see how they call it. But yeah, that was, a, that was an obvious uh, jumping the start there. They're... That'll put him back in the race, because this is really good for him. Let's go back one more time. This is after the uh, false start, and you can see he gets sideways and, oh. But you know what it shows is these trucks are very tough. You know, they're designed to do that, like I mentioned before. So now we are back under green flag racing, and yes, Chad Hoard was given his second place position back right behind Jeff Kincaid. I'm sure that's going to make Kincaid real happy. <laughs> but that's right, though. I think that's the way it should be. I, I, I agree with that call. So there's Chad, minus some body panels, but that's what these trucks are designed to do. You can drop them off a three-story building, and they'll still run. I just noticed something with Jeff Kincaid's truck. If you watch him go through this corner, that big sweeping left-hand corner, he's got a little bit of a push there. And I may have a braking problem, something like that, but I noticed the front end pushing. When that happened, that's going to allow uh, Chad or somebody to get underneath him. Plus, the other thing is, watch the back of uh, Jeff's truck kick there. I just don't like those kicks. That's what you watch for. When they're kicking like that in the back, the back of the truck is up high. That's just not comfortable. Up over the jump. That time it seemed to settle pretty good. It settled down pretty good that time. It just kind of designed the jump and how you hit it. You know, you can change how the, the attitude of the truck out flies a lot like a motorcycle by carrying that throttle. The top four have sort of checked out on the rest of the field and behind Kincaid and Ford. You've got uh, Kyle LeDuc in the 99 and Casey Curry in the number two. And on the outside, Kyle LaDuke's gonna try and make the pass stick. I don't know if he's got enough. Oh, and now he's gonna dive inside and gets blocked. I mean, he gets chopped <laughs> off right by Chad Horde. That's experience. So while this battle goes on, we've talked about forward bite and side bite. It's all up to the tire grooving. Here's what we mean. I'm here with Ed Sursak, who is a principal engineer at Kumo. Now, Ed, why don't you tell us the different options that the drivers have to choose from? Okay, Kimberly, for today's race, we have brought uh, 35, 12, 50, 17, which is the big tire that all the pro teams use. Once we've decided on the compound that we're going to go with, then we start adding the grooves based on what the drivers like. As you can see the difference here. We've purposely left these large areas full of rubber, so that way we can cut out where we need to cut to add either traction, steering, or side bite for the driver. Now talking about side bite, I see that you guys have this pretty little detail on the side, but it's not just there to look pretty. What is its function? Actually, we call those side biters, and they actually do have a function. And you'll be able to watch the folks on TV can see if a tire is really hooking up well or if it's spinning by the size of the rooster tail. You watch the rooster tails coming off. If they're long and low, the tire is really hooking up, grabbing the earth and throwing it out and getting a lot of forward bite. If you see that rooster tail spinning up fairly high, the, the tire's just spinning and the driver's not getting that forward bite that he's looking for. That gives you a little more insight into the sport, and the boy tire grooving is essential. You pick the wrong combination, you are going south. <laughs> it really is. You know, Chad Horde here is doing a fantastic job. I, you know, he, I think what happened when he went over, he got mad. But sometimes that helps. If, you're, if you can control being mad, that's okay. Take a look a little bit further back. Old Kincaid, man, Jeff's got his hands full with young Kyle LeDuc, and LeDuc on the outside. This is a drag race down the rhythm section, and oh, LeDuc almost gets the nose buried into one of those whoops, but now it costs him because Kincaid gets back. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. It just cost you time. Anytime the wheels are off the ground, the back end's high, your brakes aren't working. It's just uh, it's just a matter of fact. You got to get those tires on the ground to make it, this whole truck uh, work and get around this track as efficiently as you can. That's what you get. White flag left. White flag is out for Chad Horde. Jeff Kincaid is in second. No, he's dropped back. All of a sudden, Kincaid is slowing. And this was an issue that we saw back uh, on our last round where he was looking very strong and then all of a sudden had a problem with the truck. And he is back to at 
looks like about fourth place now. You know, you see that quite a bit with uh, Jeff. You know, he'll uh, he'll uh, be strong and strong, and then and something will break in the truck. It's, it's kind of a you know, MO of uh, Jeff Kincaid. Well, this should be a very interesting winter interview because Chad Horde had a little bit of everything happen to him in this race. He got out in front, then the restart being jumped by Steve Federico gave him second life because the truck ended up on its ear, and he ended up in pit lane. But here he comes to take the checkered flag, and he picks up his first win of the 2009 Torch campaign here in Pro Life. Take a look. It was Kyle LaDuke second, Casey Curry third, Jeff Kincaid did hold on for fourth. And look at Brian Deegan from 13th to 5th. Let's check in with Kimberly. Chad Horde definitely deserves this win. You did not leave these fans disappointed after that race. After the false start, you got to go back into your second place. You changed the tire and you flipped. Walk us through everything that was going through your mind. I don't know. I don't know if I'm still with it here yet. But uh, and when they said I could get our spot back, you know, I was just, I was pumped. We went back in, changed the tire and came back out and steering wheel was cocked. They told me some truck had some toe out, but I said, we know we're still going for this and something in the flip, the fans weren't working. The water's at 250, the oil's over 300, you know, AMS oil, these Kumo tires at the end of the race, Boss Plow, Fox Racing shocks, you've seen us skipping through that whoop section. I mean, that's why we're here today. Take a look at the points, and you can see that uh, Chad Horde and Jeff Kincaid are deadlocked. Kyle LaDuke is only one back, and we have a great championship through four rounds of racing here in the Pro Light Division. It's the Pro Light at the Big House. And get a load of this land rush. Look at the start there from Marty Hard, the number 15 on the inside, the far left of your screen. It looks like he's going to get out first again. Hart, who won yesterday, gets the whole shot here at the Big House. Chris Brand involved in some bumping there, number 82. Oh. And once again, number nine gets sideways way off course. That is the nine of Chad Horde. And Chad Horde has seen his series of problems this year. Unbelievable. Wow, that was an incredible crash. Horde did so well yesterday. Despite all the adversity, take a look at this. He has a quick nudge, it looks like, with Kincaid. Wow, what a trip. Almost four complete rotations for the 32-year-old from Felch, Michigan. Well, Chad Hort has been involved in some terrific wrecks just this year on the Traxxas Torque Racing Series. Here we are only in round number six. Meanwhile, your leader out in front, you know why I know he's leading? Because he's the cleanest rig out there. Marty Hart, the one-man party in the lead. Until yesterday, Marty Hart had had a very up-and-down season. He won the very first race out of the gate in Texas. Then just terrible results for the next three races, but he is the first person to win two races in our Pro Light Series this year, so Hart now out in front, and that means trouble for the rest of the pack. Here in the pro line is Marty Hart, your leader. He has two wins this season, as Tess pointed out, the 47-year-old from Columbia, Louisiana, looking good so far. The track a little tackier, I think, than a lot of the drivers expected. Well, what's happened is they did a lot of work on the track, and unfortunately, it, it really just disturbed this dirt, and so we have those loamy conditions, and that tends to create a lot of bite in the tires, and the problem there is it kicks the truck around. Casey Curry coming through, already sustained the body damage. That's fiberglass, not a major problem there. They're all chasing Marty Hart at this time. Remember, we're going nine laps here in Pro Light. Right there, the orange truck, that is Randy Eller. Eller also has a little bit of a fight on his hand. He was one of the people that had that little beat and bang we were talking about with Chad Hoard yesterday. Uh, won't be happening for him today, I'm sure. Let's find out more. Here's Kimberly Pressler. Chad Horde is not going to let a few little flips stop him from finishing the race. Well, you know, coming into turn one there, I think we, we had talked the other day. I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for it. It's that time of year you go for it every every inch. And uh, we come around the corner, just wasn't enough room for Jeff and I to come off the jump in that same area. So I went to get out of it. We got together and I ended up tumbling. The body damage here, the pro lights, substantial. Chad Hort is back on track. Look at that. There's no panel there on his right-hand side door. The other side of the truck is just hanging off, but he is just so determined. 
the story here at the front of Marty Hart and behind him the number four of Jeff Kincaid. Kincaid is the local guy. He lives just a few miles from this track. And interesting, when you talked to Marty Hart, he said he followed Kincaid purposely yesterday to learn this track. Right now he's out in front of Kincaid, but if anyone knows how to work his way around, it's Jeff Kincaid. Get a good shot of the 23 of Mark Krieger from Green Bay, Wisconsin, a 39-year-old having a good run here. Hart continues to lead. Kincaid sits in second. Then it's Curry and Eller, your top four. So as we get set for the competition yellow, which will bring the entire field, and that's one of the reasons why it's such a great thing here at Traxxas Torque Racing. This competition yellow will slow them all down and bring them all back together again. So when we come back to the big house, much more of the Traxxas Torque Racing Series Pro Lights competition yellow. Stay with us. Hooked up, you can see the roost. Second half of Pro Life Racing underway. Oh, I know who got a great start there it was Casey Curry, the number two monster truck. He really got the jump. He's chasing down Jeff Kincaid in the number four machine now. We're going to go for the win. I have nothing else to lose but to win, and uh, I definitely want to get Monster up on top, and I want to get a, I want to get a win. He does not want to let those two pull away the way they did at the start of the race. You can see Curry there chasing Kincaid down the hill, but Hart, he's just checking out. Unbelievable, his performance so far. We're on lap number five of nine. It continues to be Marty Hart, your leader, number 15 from Columbia, Louisiana, has it going on today in Crandon. Casey Curry came into Texas. He actually won his first race there. He was unsponsored. And this is the incredible thing, you know, he had that Supercross background. He actually rode for Kawasaki Team Green. After he won in Texas, the guys from Monster said, you know what, you're young, you're spectacular. How about we give you a little green M on the side of your truck? And Casey Curry said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, he's repaying it today. Right now, Curry running in third place behind Kincaid and Hart, your leader, number 15. He's got a lead. And the thing is, Tess, what they've got to do, because they're not going to get another competition yellow, is they cannot let him, if they can, keep Marty Hart from running away and checking out. Well, what you really need to do now is just mat this thing, go flat out as fast as you possibly can, and hope that the engine hangs on, because that really is the question now. Now it becomes a test of attrition. Who is going to make it all the way to the finish? We've already seen a couple of these right. guys just blow and be out. And if you think this is great racing, take a look at what happened yesterday. Local boy Jeff Kincaid took the whole shot. He lives a few miles from here. This is a great start to his day. Track conditions perfect, especially for Marty Hart, who gets away. And not so lucky is Kincaid, whose power steering went out. But in the end, it was your winner, Marty Hart. Look at this. We got a great battle, though, for third place. These guys want to be on the podium at the big house. The funny thing is Chad Hort just will not give up. He is fighting so hard right now. Lap pound. Man, that is a racer tried and true. So we are on the white flag, the final lap of the pro light circuit. It has been all Marty Hart, number 15. Jeff Kincaid, number four, trying to track him down, but you see the distance that he's going to have to make up, and it is almost a foregone conclusion, but great racing here at Crandon, nonetheless. Well, there are no foregone conclusions in this form of racing because just one of those berms taken the wrong way by Hart could put that truck on his roof, but I don't think he's going to do that today. I think he's now going to ride really sensibly on this last corner, take the checkered flag, and get the second win, sweeping the weekend, Marty Hart. Your winner of the pro light division, Marty Hart gets the job done at the big house. And Kimberly Pressler is down with the winner of the pro light class. Now, when you took the whole shot, did you know all the chaos that was going on behind you with Chad Hort? No, I had no idea. I mean, all I know is, you know, I knew what I had to do to get out front, you know what I mean? Because if you're going to beat King K, that's all I'm after when I show up here. But to get one of these uh, Oakley deals, I mean, it's, it's special because it's, uh, it's just someone who supports the series and it's very special to us. Now, this is your hometown. How disappointed are you? Had a good race going, and, you know, for the Forest County Five on these tracks is be a good rich. Um, second's not nothing to hang your head on. To be right up here with Jeff and Marty, 
That says a lot for the motor and the tires. So the points look like this in the pro light class. Chad Hoard, Jeff Kincaid, dead even at 110. Behind them, Casey Curry, Marty Hart, and Chris Brandt rounding out your top five. We are ready for Pro Light from Bark River International Raceway. On a picture perfect day, track conditions are outstanding. Chad Hort, he starts sixth. This is an inverted format because he is our points leader. Chad Hort has just a 12 point lead. He got the point lead yesterday in round number seven. Yes, and this is a hometown battle between Jeff Kincaid and Chad Hort. They're both considered local boys, even though Chad Hort's from just right up the street at Fells, Michigan. It's going to be a shootout probably between these two guys because they've been here for so long. And we are off and running in Park River, Michigan. And it looks like Casey Curry pulling out the whole shot for Monster Energy. Casey Curry, number two in the Monster Black car, and he has got a great line, but he's got company on the inside. Marty Hart takes it away. Hey, Look at Federico ramming and jamming right already in the first turn. You got to watch that guy. He's trouble. Number 24, Steven Federico, and he turns around Jeff Kincaid. Chad Hort, number nine, also into the mix, but it's Jeff Kincaid who comes to a complete stop. Well, Casey Curry, and it looks like Chris Brant's right on his tail, but those boys are already racing dirty, Todd. Already racing dirty. Let's look at that one more time. Keep your eye on Kincaid, number four. Federico, number 24. Chad Hort's number nine, our points leader. A tough way to start, and right off the bat, Chad Hort is off the track. Well, that's a tough break for Chad Hort. He come out and had a great day yesterday taking the win, and already in the first turn, all that, I got to call it dirty driving right in the first turn by Steven Federico, and Chad paid the price. Leah has more. What do you think happened on that turn? I'm not really sure. We're just all coming down there in the start, and Jeff got sideways. I don't know if somebody put him sideways or he just got put sideways. We're all bunched up, and I think it was him I ended up hitting him to, and it, they tell me it broke the spindle off. That's a tough break for Chad Hort, but who knows? He may be able to get back in the track. Marty Hart, though, leads them. Remember, we are going nine laps. Halfway through, though, we will have the competition caution. Marty Hart continues to lead the Pro Lights. This is the light duty two wheel drive truck division, 300 horsepower, suspension about 12 inches to the front, 14 in the back, weighing in around 2,800 pounds. And right now, Marty Hart is on fire on the course here at Bark River. He has had three straight podium finishes after posting three straight finishes of 12th or worse. So I'd say the season is coming to Marty Hart. It's really a little early to start worrying about the points right now, but all you can do is keep winning and keep finishing on the podium. He's really got a lot of confidence coming into this weekend. He's got that look about him like a Cheshire cat, man. He's grinning because he feels really good about his truck. He says he's made a lot of changes this year, bringing on Fox Shock, doing a lot of adjustments in between races. And, you know, and like I say, Marty Hart, this is not his first rodeo. He's doing very well today. Casey Curry sits in the number two position. Curry, the number two car, Monster Energy Nissan. Behind him, though, Chris Brand, the Toyota, trying to reel him in, currently sitting in third place. Now, remember, for a win, you get 25 points. Chad Hort, our points leader, he had a 12-point lead over Jeff Kincaid, so if he can't get back on the track, that's gone. Plus, you factor in at the halfway point when the competition caution comes out. If you're the first man there, you get two more points. So Marty Hart could have a 27-point weekend. Hey, he's looking big for Marty Hart. Casey Curry, big air at Bark River. This track is probably Supercross and Millercross combined. We got the biggest jumps we've ever had and, and uh, the tightest corners, and we got the longest straightaways. Marty Hart has certainly figured this track out. Well, you see how smooth he's lo he looks out there? It's, it's in the suspension. You know, some drivers will tell you the single most important thing here, almost as much as horsepower, is the suspension setup. And we talked to Marty a lot about that because he's really a good suspension guy. He's got those Fox shocks really looking good, you know, based on what we're seeing today so far. And here's Leah with this week's Amsoil Tech Fact. I'm here with Marty Hart, who is fresh off a victory sweep in Crandon. Marty, I'm interested in shocks. I don't know much about them. Can you tell me what is going on here? Wow, what you have on these particular trucks. This is your 
It's called a primary spring, and this controls all your small bumps. You got your bigger spring, it's a larger diameter, and it's actually your secondary, which, you know, you, one's for small bumps and one's for large bumps. And then this is your control shock right here. It controls the suspension as far as how fast it moves through its travel. And you've got different sections by bypass tubes that you can adjust during the travel of the suspension. So you can slow the movement of the tires down, speed them up. The kick in the truck is all adjusted through this control shock right here. So this is your primary shock, and then your control shock. Well, he's in a position right now to pick up two more points at the halfway point as we get set for the competition caution. Then they will bunch the drivers back up together again, get a one lap, and then go to the restart. The way he started the first time around, it'd be fantastic as the yellow flag gets set to come out. And there it is. So the competition caution is in effect. They will bunch these drivers up again. And the best news is for you fans, you'll see another restart. Okay, I gotta ask you, Todd, who are you picking right now? Right now, I'm gonna say Marty Hart's the guy. Son of Curry and the Toyota right now of Jeff Kincaid locked up in a battle for second place. Marty Hart is all but checked out. Hey, I'll tell you what, Brains, look at this right move. Now. To the inside, Jeff Kincaid, does he have the drive? He does it. He gets it done, Todd. He gets it done. Let's see what Casey does now. It's going to be tough because, like I said, he's down on horsepower compared to Kincaid. So it's going to be really tough on Casey. And now he's going to have to battle it out with Chris Brandt. Very game Chris Brandt. Number 82, Chris Brandt in the Lucas Oil Toyota coming up on him out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. So Casey Curry has gone into the hornet's nest right now. And it looks like Brandt's going to try the inside. Is that just a, is he just setting him up there, Mitch? He's going to show a little inside line, maybe a little outside line? Oh, it looks like they play those head games, you know, inside, outside, you know. Some say, oh, yeah, I was just setting him up. But sometimes it don't work out, and they don't play that story in the interview room, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, like, oh, yeah, I was just setting him up. And speeds approaching 90 miles an hour here at Bark River International Raceway. This is the Traxxas Torque Series. Marty Hart is our leader right now in the Pro Light Division as we have got two laps to go. 95 miles an hour going over jumps and whoops, rocks, you name it. Man, this torque racing is awesome in a four-cylinder truck running 95 miles an hour in the dirt. Man, I wish I could do this. If you've got a short attention span, this is the perfect series for you because <laughs> they get in and they get out fast. And look Look at the distance young Casey Curry carries. Hey man, Casey came to drive today. I'm telling you, he's got something to prove. Number two, Casey Curry, the former AMA Supermoto competitor. This kid knows how to drive it, whether it's two or four wheels. Right now, though, he is in a podium position in third place. But the leader continues to be Marty Hart out of Columbia, Louisiana. He has got that Ford hooking up three wins already in 2009. Hey, Marty Hart looks like he's the man today so far. And uh, Jeff Kincaid, though, you, you got to keep an eye on him. If Hart has any loss of concentration or he has any mechanical problems, and we've seen that in before. trouble. Yeah, we've seen that on the Traxxas Torque Series. He'll blow a tire on the last lap. Marty Hart with the white flag out. He is going to try to bring this thing home and put that Ford on the podium in the pro light division. Hey, I see some smoke coming out of Marty's truck. Is he, is he going to be able to make it through the last lap? What did I tell you? We've seen this before, and he is getting pressure now from Jeff Kincaid, number four, the Traxxas Toyota is on the gas from Argonne, Wisconsin. He sees the blood in the water. He does, man. He's, he's hearing these elephant steps from a Toyota behind him in that Traxxas truck. And here he comes. Here he comes. This is Marty where we are. This is losing where we power. And Jeff Kincaid goes right past him. I got to give credit where credit is due. Mitch Covington called it at the competition. Caution, you said Jeff Kincaid would get it done. And he has won four of the last seven pro light races held here. So, Bark River has been very, very good. What a fortuitous step because that man has got flames inside the car. He's got smoke coming out the back. Well, it just goes to show anything can happen in this Traxxas Torque Series. And look at all the smoke. Marty Art. You know he's got to be disappointed. And he has got flames. He is burning that thing up. He's going to run this thing to the very end because second place is much better than DNF. 
I think, I think that's exactly Nate's what's going to happen. Yeah, he's playing it smart, now. He needs to get his little self out of the truck right now, man. It's, it's getting hot in the kitchen there, man. He's got to get out of there. And he will extricate himself from that Traxxas vehicle, which served him so well for just over eight laps. There you see the frustration. He was so close to grabbing all 27 points. And Mitch, you got to wonder, you know, through eight laps, he looked perfect. Where did he do the damage? I think it's right when he comes through this whoop section right here and he hits really hard on the back end. But you know what happened? He blew an engine because he told me coming in, this thing's like a ticking time bomb because I'm running a backup set of gears that's geared too low. And he says, I just hope I make it through the race without popping this thing. And sure enough, I think that's what's happened. And what that fire is all about, engine oil flying everywhere probably inside of this hood. And I can guarantee you it caught some kind of spark. Now we got an oil fire, and it's hot inside there. And uh, it's a great thing Marty got out when he did, because it could have been a lot worse. So banner day for the local. Jeff Kincaid gets the victory, gets his Traxxas Toyota across the finish line first, also gets the Oakley Bomb Award. That took place on lap number eight. Our Leah Pruitt is standing by with the winner. Jeff, what a dramatic finish. When did you realize that Marty Hart was having troubles to take advantage of it? Yo, know, right, not to that last lap. We got a little incident at the beginning. It got spun out, and I knew it was going to all, all I could do to get up to him, you know what I mean? I knew that caution, competition caution was coming out, so I was biding my time getting up there front. But uh, once that came out, you know, my guys are telling me, a, a second a lap, a second a lap, you're catching him, you're catching him. I knew the last lap, and when I popped over this hill, and I seen smoke, I'm like, yeah, he pushed it too hard. Casey Curry, third place. You switched places so many times. What do you think about this third place? Yeah, you know, my team worked really hard on this one. I, I got to give it up. You know, last night we changed a tranny and a clutch, and uh, Chad Horde actually gave me the clutch that's in the truck. And, uh, you know, they worked all night and all day today. We actually missed practice working on it. So, uh, you know, it's like a win to us. So we have heard from the podium as we take a look at the overall standings, and we find a tie once again. Chad Horde and Jeff Kincaid. Chris Brandt sits in third. Casey Curry, Marty Hart rounding out the top five here in the pro-like division. Using their lines a lot. Yep. Why? Well, right there on that onboard shot, you saw it. Marty Hart, you don't want to stick right behind the guy's tire in front of you. You're going to get pelted with all those rocks and mud. And, oh, see Jeff Kincaid put a little slide job on Marty Hart there trying to. That was that was close. That's a fast corner right there for these guys. Well, let's take a look at it one more time. Marty Hart pushing the pace here at Bark River. Yeah, you see right here, it looks like Marty gets out to that little soft dirt. Oh, Jeff Kincaid, just a little love tap. No dirty race in there. That's just two guys driving hard. But like you said, look how Jeff is staying just off to the side of it and now back to the other side you don't want to get right in the roost of that tire in the pro two-wheel drive class that plays an even bigger part we are on lap two of 11 here in pro light from bark river michigan casey curry number two the monster nissan out in front and right there, Marty Hart, you see in seconds, the Southwest Ground Control. He's got Max's tire forward, does a great job. He has been a hard charger all year. Great season for him so far. There you see the four, Jeff Kincaid. He is our current points leader of the Forest County Pottawatomie Toyota BF Goodrich ride. Mr. Consistency right there. I no mean, you question. can't get any better than that. And then Chad Hoard, Boston Apply Mazda, brand new truck this year. Chad and Jeff have been battling for years in the pro Light division. Our way through the field here. That is number 82. That is Chris Brandt in the Lucas Oil Toyota. Chris does a nice job. He's not got a lot of experience, but he's got a little bit. And you're looking back right here, the invisible glass Hankook tire. Uh, oops, that's Toyota this year. I forgot. Mark Krieger. Normally it's it's Steven Federico. Right now, Mark Krieger driving the truck to take his place. How about Mark Oberg? Oberg, he's the twin brother of Mike Oberg. These guys are privateers. Raceline oil pumps, they've got four, they've had it for years. Great, great men in off-road racing. Back on board with Marty Hart, currently sitting in second place for the moment. Oh, Look at this. come on, King K, go. Coming up to the S's to the big jump. These guys, I love watching great race car drivers. This is so much fun. Wow, they are staying bunched up here. Just shows the parity in this class. This, like I said, limited horsepower. They don't jump as far as the pro two-wheel drives, the pro four-by-fours, but they put on some of the best racing. And there you go, Marty Hart once again applying that pressure. Oh, no, there it is. Oh, Kincaid. Hard hit. That could break some up. Oh, Kincaid gets going. Kincaid gets going, but Casey Curry has his problems. Curry is sitting dead in the water here at Bark River. I don't know. It looked like Marty Hart might have got into it. No. Well, just what I was talking about, Todd. Mistake. Lay that pressure on. Lay that pressure on. Kincaid thought he saw the opening. Goes to the inside. And right there, 
You see nowhere to go with the Monster Nissan. Jeff Kincaid, he, he's still running. I don't know if the Monster Nissan is going to keep going, though, but you see it again right there. Marty Hart just laid that pressure on, didn't do anything to him, didn't spin him, didn't do anything dirty. And now Marty Hart, the recipient, as we go back on board here out the back of him in the lead. And if I look correctly, I believe that's the red Boss Snowplow Mazda of Chad Hort. What a, from the, a horrible start all the way to second place. That's what you do in racing right there. You just take control and wait. So it's Marty Hart, Chad Hort running one and two. Traxxas Torque Racing presented by Amsoil is brought to you by Traxxas, the fastest name in radio control. By Amsoil, the first in synthetics. And by Kumho Tires, get your style. Hope you enjoyed our little segment we like to call Dirty Love as we go on board with Marty Hart, our leader, and we are back to racing in the Pro Light class. And like we said, Marty Hart didn't want the caution. Jeff Kincaid, though, right there, loving this caution. Look at Oberg. Where, where'd Oberg come from? You got the privateer in the mix. Oberg place. Way to go, Mark Oberg. Coming out of nowhere. I love it. I love it. Right now, who's loving it? Marty Hart. He is out in front. Clean air, clean vision. Chad Hoard currently sitting in second place. Then Jeff Kincaid sits in third place. Now, Kincaid, he's got his vehicle hooking up as he's moving through the pack, Brendan. He is flying right now, and I love that come and go little camera we got right there. Man, it looks fantastic the way Kincaid's driving today. He is our current points leader, and yesterday, he really had it hooking up here at Bark River. Yeah, looking at some highlights of round nine. Look at Marty Hart woo, over that tabletop flying. But Jeff Kincaid knows Bark River better than anybody. Applying the pressure, applying the pressure. Marty Hart over the berm and Jeff Kincaid flying. Jeff Kincaid not only picks up the win, but he also gets the Oakley Bomb Award as we move back to Marty Hart, our current leader today. And Marty Hart has run almost a flawless race. Marty told us on Saturday he had a hard time focusing out there on the tracks, so that it was hard to make the transition from mechanic to driver. It looks like today he's more than figured that out. He is absolutely boring out there on the track. In the Torque Series, you know, a lot of these guys have to work on their own stuff. It's not like NASCAR right. where I got a whole team of guys, even the guys that have manufacturer support, even the guys that have Maxis, good sponsors, they still got to work on it. Marty Hart is a veteran and a great mechanic. So, I mean, five top three finishes. He's had a great season. But I don't like how he's running into these berms real hard. It just scares me how he keeps pounding that berm like that. And sitting in second place is Chad Horn. He would love to get an opportunity to get a little closer to Marty Hart. But he's got Jeff Kincaid off his back left side. We'll see what happens there. But Chad Horn, he says he is ready to close in on the championship here in Torque. This is a young man with a lot of talent. He's looking to take home some big-time hardware. We're starting to count points and, you know, before in the beginning of the season, it seems like you took chances. Now we're starting, you know, seeing where people are at and finishing races. Well, he is taking chances, but he's made a few changes to the truck. Kristen has more on that. Chad Hoard told us that during his race Saturday, he was not happy with his engine, took it back to the pits once they got inside, said they were not happy with what they saw. They put a new engine in last night, and it looks to be running much better today. It is running better, but it's tough to say your points race. And oh, as he goes the inside, he pushes, wow. Ma whoa, pushes Marty out of the berm. And does Marty have a rear flat? Uh, it looks like Marty Hart, it, it sure looked like that the roost was not being kicked up right. I think Marty has a flat. But Chad Hort, the recipient of that, Jeff Kincaid second. Let's look at it one more time. Here's Chad Hort putting a little pressure on Marty. You see right there Jeff Kincaid coming to the screen. That, it's not throwing up a ton of roost. We should be seeing more of that debris you've been talking about. He hits the berm there, but I think he has a flat tire, guys. Well, he's hit that berm on almost every single lap, and you wonder if that's going to take a toll. It has to take a toll at some point on the thing. But he's he's been he's been talking about not having a flat tire for 90 races. Oh, it still sounds beautiful out there as they continue to motor around this track. It's time to get a little torqued up.
these four cylinders, they don't quite sound like the pro two-wheel drives, the pro four-by-fours, but I still love the sound when you get all these guys. We have the best of the best here at Torque. Hey, Chad Hoard, the, the perennial champion. Jeff Kincaid, nobody has more championships than him in pro light division. And look at the battle they're putting on for the fans. Oh, out here, on the outside, Kincaid taking the hard way around. Well, Chad Hoard is holding his line and can, for oh, the time being, oh, holding his lead. No, got but for him. how long? He's got him. Inside out, two different corners inside out of him, with the fender in his face, Toyota flapping in his nose. And look at the battle as the come and go shot. Way to go, Kincaid. Got him. I, I've always loved watching Jeff Kincaid. He is so much fun to watch. And that is why he is the points leader in the pro light division. The Forest County Pottawatomie Toyota B of Goodrich ride out in front. Chad Hort sits in second place. Crafty veteran, though, he will find a way to get back in there. Meanwhile, Marty Hart, as you pointed out, you didn't think the roost was right. Let's find out more from Kristen right now. Marty Hart has blown his back left tire, not choosing to come into the pits, going to try and ride it out. You called it, Brendan. The back left is flat. And, and the back right. He's got two rear flats. Oh, oh, look at this. The points leader, Jeff Kincaid, who was <laughs> leading, has come in, and the telltale smoke is coming from the engine. You know, we talked, Chad Hoard talked about taking easy points racing. There's only one, the best points race in the world. Go win the race. All right, Brendan, you've been around racing enough. Let's go back and look at this. Is there anything you see here why this would happen? Well, it looks like he's blown an engine, and these Pro-Light pickups, the radiators are up front. Remember that earlier incident with Casey Curry? Could have been, and you see Casey Curry right there? Could have been radiator damage. Could have lost the motor on that one. All right, that is the picture of misery loving company right now. And who is the beneficiary of it all? <laughs> told you, the man that said he won the points race, now he's going to take get the most points you can get in it. He's got a couple corners left on the white flag lap. His Kumo tires, he's just chilling, going to take a victory. Chad Horde out in front and nothing but nice Bark River real estate until he'll see the checkered flag here in Pro Lights. What a great job. Stay out of the melees. Let everybody beat and bang. Put on a show for the fans. Great job. Well, here's how it all started. <laughs> oh. Marty Hart getting mixed up with Chad Horde, and in the meantime, your points leader Jeff Kincaid squeezes by, but he'll have his problem. That's right, Jeff Kincaid, couple corners inside out, gets by Chad Horde. Great move, even with the fender in his face. See the rear flats? 90 races plus with Max's tires, no flats. What a bad time. The lead wouldn't last long for Kincaid. He comes over the big Max's jump, blows an engine. Chad Hoard is there and gets the job done. So Chad Hoard is your winner. Right now, let's throw it down to Kristen Garrett, who's with a very happy Chad Hoard. This was a hard-earned win. Tell me about your race out there. Yeah, you know, it just took us a bit to get up to the front there, but Marty kept smacking that bank over there, and it was just a matter of time until he was going to peel a tire off the rim, and Jeff and I had quite a pace set, but uh, this Boss Snow, Boss Snowplow Amza Kumo tire truck, it was here in the end, and it just shows what my crew's made of. Mark Oberg, your highest finish yet in the Torque Series, but you definitely had to work through some carnage. Tell me how you did it. I just, I kept listening to my spotter, and he just, he kept keeping me calm in the corners and just kept working at it, and he, he did a new cut on my tires, and they, they worked great, you know, and my temperatures were good, and, and I just, I just kept working. Martin, your top finish here in the Torque Series. How'd you do it? Here, everybody's blowing motors, and it's hard, and this track is hard, and, and uh, we just hung in there. Well, there's always two sides to every story. We heard from Casey Curry. Let's get Marty Hart's side of this little collision. Well, I think I got a little aggressive in there on Casey. He was running a great race, and, and I just went in there a little bit hard. I think I got a great run on him going in there, and I really wanted to commit to pass him. Then I had Ken Say Kincaid come up in on my inside, so I really had to take it on in there, and then Casey jumps on the brakes, and I'm committed. So, you know what I mean? I tagged him, and I tagged him too hard, I'm sure. But I want USAC to look at it from, you know, where Kincaid was and how deep I needed to go in the corner. And, I mean, obviously it wasn't intentional. Nobody wants to spin anybody out in this sport. Uh, it's just hard racing. And, and sometimes you're gonna, if you're pushing the envelope, you're gonna get in those situations. And that picture says it all. What a heartbreaker for the points leader, Jeff Kincaid. I don't know what happened between Marty and uh, Casey, and I said, oh, I got a good move on the inside here. I'm gonna pay, make the move on him, and all of a sudden, here come Casey right across in front. I don't know real, what really happened. You know, I think it was just a incidental contact, but uh, I mean, I hit him square, I hit him hard, but we were still running him. She let go on me, but I mean, we put a show on while we were there. What a show indeed in the pro light class. Chad Horde, your current leader, but look at Mark Oberg, sixth place, privateer getting it done. I, I love room for the small guys right now. The, the entrepreneurs, the small guys, to see him succeed is great.
All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, because of our time constraints, uh, earlier the Pro Lights race ran. We're going to pick it up right after the competition caution. Great story, Tiffany, and wow, what the technology is up to. Who knows? Maybe we'll have radio control play-by-play -play and analysts here pretty soon. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing here with Jeff Kincaid in front of Casey Curry, Chad Horde, Mark Oborg, and Brian Deegan. Deegan's going to try that outside line, but it's still going to be the number four of Kincaid as they come through turn one. And you see how hard Horde is working on Curry there? He wants to get through and get his chance, but Casey Curry so far is holding off the charge from that red truck of Horde. And where did Brian Deegan go? That was interesting. Ellery got past him in the red number 11. Oh, and over it goes sideways. He also collects one other truck right behind him. Could not pick up the number there. It was the 11 was Eller. of Randy Eller. Oh, no. So Deegan got past both of them because of their misfortunes. Take a look at this. Oh. oh. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm going to nudge you right into the berm. And there goes Brian Deegan sailing on past. So in the fourth place now for Deegan. He now has to start working on Chad Horn, and that is uh, that was a bad result there for Oberg. He looked like he was doing really well on that restart. Yeah, we told you this was a collision sport, and I'm sure that uh, those two will have a conversation, to say the least, at the end. Check back to the uh, battle right there with uh, Chad Horde and Casey Curry. He has gotten around Curry, so Horde, it, a, a very important run for him because remember, he is second in the points to Jeff Kincaid. Kincaid is leading again. There you can see the margin off into the distance. That's what he's got to try and cover up. And Horde and Kincaid having that busy weekend, both doing double duty. Horde in the fours, Kincaid in the pro twos. Now the question, we saw Horde's truck yesterday look really fast when he would get down those straightaways. Does he have the power now to reel in that black and white number four of Kincaid and hold off the hard charging Casey Curry. Well, Ford has two wins, seven podium finishes this season as we go back on board with Brian Deegan and Deegan up to fourth. This would be a great run for him. Uh, he's being very smart. Look at him. He looks very calm, very cool in the truck here. Look at his visor. There's, there's not a lot of mud right now on those tear-offs. That means he's not getting too close behind Casey Curry. He needs to start charging. He needs to collect a little bit more mud and dust because that means he's really in contention to get in and past Curry. Through that hard left-hander, Deegan. 16 seconds behind Jeff Kincaid, but uh, no disgrace in that. Kincaid's beat about everybody that's ever come to this track. Here he comes one more time. And just look at the way he drives this track. It's unbelievable. He goes corner to corner, and he uses the bite on those tires. We were talking about the side bite earlier, and that's where Jeff Kincaid never loses traction. He comes around the corner, he applies the tire to the rut that he finds, and he keeps the power all the way through. This is absolutely fantastic driving. There you see the gap now back to second. And there is Curry in third behind Moore. Then we move to fourth place. And there is Brian Deegan. Here comes fifth, which oh, is Marty Hart. Oh, Hart had that really bad start. He jumped. He got put way back. So now it means that Hart has a chance to chase down Deegan. That's bad for Brian Deegan. But let's see if Brian in that 38, we see him there coming into the picture, can catch up to this truck right now, the monster truck of Casey Curry. Curry's got the body damage on the right side. Don't worry about it. Aerodynamics means nothing in this sport. It's all about horsepower and fight. What kind of traction can you get through the dirt? There's Brian Deegan, competing in Rally Car and Moto X Step Up at this year's ESPN X Games. He's got his hands full right now. Well, I wonder if the pro lights are going to be uh, just as wicked. There is Jeff Kincaid. He can wrap up the title with a 13th place finish or better. There are 16 trucks in the field, so the odds are pretty solid that Jeff Kincaid is going to take home another championship crown. The green flag is out. We're racing here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. we got Casey Curry, one of our young guns, in the front row with Mark Oberg inside. Oh, is they're getting a little tail happy over that first jump. But you see Curry on the way outside the old motocross line. Oberg, wham! gets hit by Marty Hart, but Curry got the whole shot. 
So for Casey Curry, he'll be looking for his second win. Remember, he won back at uh, Texas at the very first stop on tour, but there is the battle for second. Oberg in the 30, holding off Marty Hart. Well, on that Texas track, very similar to this one. Tight, technical, muddy. Casey Curry showing he can race in the mud, but here's the initial start. Look at Curry, way on the outside near the wall. Mark Oberg down on the inside, just like a motocross race. Who's going to get it? Casey Curry. Rim ride paid off for Casey Curry there, and right now he opens up about a four or five truck length lead. Doing a nice job. I mean, you, you see that the pro lights don't handle those big bumps that we saw the pro four by fours handling better through those corners, but he's doing a great job pulling away from the field. Got a good tire groove on on his race car, just trying to pick and choose and get another W here. As remember, uh, less wheelbase and less horsepower and less weight with these pro light trucks as you're on board with Jeff Kincaid. And uh, all, like I said, all he has to do is finish 13th or better. And right now he's running back in sixth position. Yeah, Kincaid right now, I mean, we all know he's moving on next year. So I think he's just trying to, to get through this last championship. Jeff uh, Kincaid's going to be leaving this class at the end of the year, going to Pro Tour Pro 4. Here's one of the newcomers, Brian Deegan. Of course, Deegan made his name in X Games competition. You've got Jeremy McGrath, who came over from Supercross and Motocross. And we're seeing a big trend in this next generation of up-and-coming stars in the world of off-road truck racing. In fact, we talked to him about it. Torque is supercross and trucks. It's got all the features of an NASCAR. You have to have a talent on a motocross bike, and I feel that Torque brings it both to the table. I'd like to hopefully think I'm on the front end of a movement of the younger generation coming in, more action sport athletes coming in and making this sport turn into a more of like an X Games style vibe where kids can come and look up to their, their heroes that, that kind of have that image. Is That's kind of what I see where it's going. It's so dynamic and awesome and cool and just so out of the normal. This sport has come a long way from racing like little ho-dunk fields in you know the Midwest to uh, big events like this here in Vegas and you know these tracks here in these big cities. I think it's really cool. I've seen it come a long, long way. I think torque is the greatest thing that ever came about off-road racing. I think, I think torque has a variation of all the racing that we've done in the past, and I think they've just brought it to a new level. Ultimate goal is I want to race off-road in front of 100,000 people. Not, I don't want to race NASCAR, I don't want to race Supercross, I, I want to race Torque. This is the next big thing, it's gonna pop. This is, this is awesome, man. and if you haven't seen it, you need to definitely get out and see it, because you'll be in love. <laughs> I'll remember that one day if Casey's looking to come NASCAR racing, but you know, Todd LeDuc probably has the best history of that whole deal. Brian Deegan, the Metal Militia, we all know about the X Games titles. The LeDucs, though, they've been around a long time. And we'll be seeing Jeremy and Todd a little bit later in Pro 2 competition. Right now, this is Pro Light. That was Deegan running in third place. And there you see Casey Curry with Marty Hart, who had gotten around Mark Oberg while we were listening to the guys talk about the next generation. And now we've got a great battle for the race lead. And talk about a generation gap. Marty Hart, old Mickey Thompson Stadium Racing versus Casey Curry, a young, young, young gun. And right now, Curry is uh, holding the old Wiley veteran off. They go through over the uh, jumps. We're going to step aside for just a moment. After this message, we'll be back. You're going to get a word from our ABC station. This Torque Series, fans have uh, tattoos of their favorite driver's number. Las Vegas, baby. That's Love it. Las Vegas. <laughs> We're at the end of the competition. Caution and all again. It looks like it's going to be Casey Curry jumping up. Whoa! And Chad Hort, who has moved into second, has got a challenge going with Marty Hart. Marty Hart and Chad Hort had great battles all this season. Look at inside out, outside back in. Chad Hort not giving up that second spot quite yet. Chad Hort, another that is going to be moving on to either Pro 2 Pro 4 action next year as he has uh, been duking it out with uh, Jeff Kincaid for years in this class. And both of them are moving on, and here goes Marty Hart back into second place. Yeah, they've had a decade of dominance, these two guys. I mean, everybody knew Chad Hort, Jeff Kincaid. They just dominate this whole sport. It's going to be nice to see guys like Brian Deegan, Casey Curry, maybe, you know, getting a chance to shine now. Well, we uh, mentioned the fact that he is on the verge of a championship. Jeff Kincaid, let's get an update from Tiffany Simons. I just spoke with Jeff Kincaid's crew, and they told me he has a carburetor issue. However, he's going to stay in the race, keep on driving around. He wants to collect as many points as he can. You know, it is his farewell in pro light, so he wants to finish it out, guys. Well, he's running fifth right now and has to finish 13th or better to clinch the championship, and he's pretty well got it locked up.
Well, let's talk about the leading man of the class, Jeff Kincaid. He started the season on a rough note and opened the door to a supporting cast of drivers like Casey Curry. It's my first one ever. Woo! And Marty Hart. And Brian Deegan. Along with fellow veteran Chad Hoard, who had his own challenging moments. But as the season wore on, the multi-time champion asserted himself and now finds himself on the precipice of his seventh title. And it looks like he's on track to lock it up tonight. Right now, our race leader, though, is young Casey Curry, one of those young guns we were talking about, Brent. And, and where's Casey's driver's side door gone? Nobody's even close enough to put any pressure on him. I think they may have just didn't want to keep the weight on there. He was going so fast, it just blew <laughs> off. <laughs> well, you know, the Monster Nissan is on fire tonight, but oh! Oh, trouble for Marty Hart as uh, we have the slowed and stopped vehicle, Jimmy Stevenson, in the way, and he went the high side and may have done some damage to that truck. Yeah, you can look at it right there. The right front suspension and tire looks like he's done some damage. He got into that mud, pulled him out. He saw the caution probably late, was in the thick stuff, and you see the left front tire is flat, and I bet he did some suspension damage. He hit that K-Rail pretty hard. So Casey Curry has uh, taken care of just about everybody in this field tonight now with Marty Hart falling up by the wayside. The white flag is out. You can see nobody is even close. You, you know, Mr. Reed, sir, I remember back in the day when I was a, a young pup winning races way long time ago when you were doing the television, not with me, but watching me. This is going to be a very excited young man when he gets out of this race car tonight. He's stomped the field into a mud hole. Look at the lead he has. He is going to get out of this race car and just be all excited. Las Vegas, the lights off into the distance, and it looks like we're on our way to another winner who picks up his second win, caps off a great season with Casey Curry. We've already had Mike Jenkins pick up his first career win as uh, here he comes around the final corner, taking the checkered flag. Casey Curry, your winner in pro light competition here in the Traxxas Tour Off-Road Racing Series. As he is one very happy race car driver. And we can tell you Jeff Kincaid comes across the line and uh, wins the pro light championship as he finishes in sixth position. So Jeff picks up his seventh championship. Let's talk to him, Tiff. Jeff Kincaid, congratulations. This is your seventh championship in 10 years. What a way to cap out your pro-light career. Yeah, you know, I've been in this pro-light for a long time, and uh, I wanted to go out as a champion, and uh, that's a game I had to play today, you know. I, I, was, I was scared, you know. I had, to, I had to tell my guys where I'm at, you know, because Marty had a chance of beating me. So uh, we worked hard and just kept playing and playing and playing, and once they said, oh, we're down to 11 guys, you got championship, I took off racing, and also my fuel pressure went away on me. So I was like, ah, I'm still going to finish this race, you know, and bring home a championship for Traxxas, Forest County, Pottawa, Adams, BF Goodrich, and Amsoil. He did finish in sixth position, and there you see the final results with Casey picking up his second win of the year. You just told me that is what you needed. Why? You know, this year has been up and down, and Monster gave uh, me everything I needed to win, and, you know, I needed to do it for them, and my parents and I are going to do exactly what I did in Texas. Wow, baby! Dude, BFG, I mean, we killed it today. I didn't pull one tear up in the mud, and that says a lot, you know. There's a lot of competitors behind me. I can see it in my mirror, but we had it going the whole time. Yeah! Woo! Chad Horde, a battle of a season, and yet you never gave up. It takes a lot of strength to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, uh, we got, I think, four wins this year. We led the points championship for quite a while, and last couple of races have been kind of tough for us, but you know, just we wanted to keep this Boss Snowplow Amsoil Kumo tire truck on top. So this is probably my last pro light race, so uh, we're happy to be here again and we're just going to keep marching forward. And another podium for you. Talk about being consistent at the very end of the season. Well, we've been pretty consistent all year long, you know. Um, Kumo tires, they've been helping us out a lot. And, uh, you know, this, this goes out to my spotter. I was ready to give up after that first yellow, and thanks to all the torque people and uh, everybody worked so hard to get us here, so thank you.